YouTube, what's good? It's Fat Boy Or. We're back with another reaction video. We're we'll reacting to Inside America's Deadliest Cartel Police Tour. I should probably watch part one, but I don't feel like doing that. So I'm just gonna do two. I am in Laredo, Texas, a dangerous border town where the cartel has complete control over the migrant crisis. Damn. Building on our first video, I'm diving even deeper with those on the ground to learn about cartel networks, stash houses, and the border wall to uncover the truth. Because the question remains, is a secure border even possible? But first, if I was going to ride along with these guys, I was going to have to train just like they do. Holy f that was shit. the most humbling experience of all time. So I started my day getting choked out at 5 a.m., but now I wanted to see one of the ways migrants do go from these border towns after they're smuggled to other states like Colorado to even New York. Because as you saw in part one, we were finally able to get the approval to go inside the stash house. Oh, it's open now. It's open. Oh, so good. We're just uh, waiting on the... Uh, how many people there were in the stash house? 17. 17 people, yeah. Yeah, and you'll see right now once we go in, okay, how did 70 people even fit here? You see, it's kind of like a smaller home. I don't know the exact square footage, but it seems to be like a three bedroom. Vamos a entrar adentro, oiga, está bien? Sí. Gracias. Sí. Sí, sí. Yeah, they don't want to come out, and that's what you're saying, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can you can so, smell it. So just imagine 17 people in here. It, it must have been real bad. Uh, it is a, a three bedroom, but it's very small three bedroom. And this is not even a bedroom. This is more and like just a- one shower. Just one shower, one restroom. This oh, is just geez. the living room, I'm thinking. You have two rooms. This room and then that room. Yeah, man, you can. So was everybody sleeping in here? Yeah, everybody's sleeping here, Ooh. sleeping over there. They're sleeping anywhere they could. I can imagine, like, when you have, like, family trips, motherfuckers in a, five motherfuckers in a one-bedroom is crazy. So imagine 17. But you can, Not a one-bedroom, but you got to to say, it's, like, still five. That's a lot of fucking people. Man, imagine, like, like 17 this, is a lot of people. This, uh... This place is not meant for 70 people. Yeah, Obviously, yeah, they no. cleaned it out. Some of the, you know, these were some of the old mattresses and stuff like that. But yeah, man, uh, it's pretty bad conditions. And then obviously one shower for 17 people. It's I mean, crazy. this isn't even really a three bedroom. It's, no, it's, 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 it's a two. It's a two bedroom. It's like a two bedroom yeah. with a with like a living. a living room. Yeah. Initially, I thought this was like a bedroom, but they were using it like a bedroom. I see. So what happened to all the migrants that were rounded up from this? Um, we'll interview them, especially if there's females involved. We want to make sure that none of them got assaulted. Obviously, the males too. We'll, we'll go through some line of questioning. Any of them were threatened. Uh, any of them were, were they were going to be trafficked. Uh, if any of their property got stolen. Most of the time, the women do end up being the person who brought them here and was right. going to take them out. Uh, one of the telltale signs, I think they closed it out, but one of the telltale signs, they'll put foil paper. Uh, you could kind of see they're restricted off a little bit, mm. but they'll glue it. Sometimes you kind of see like all the history. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they'll glue it um, on the windows. Sometimes they'll board them up because- uh, That you must could, make it infinitely hotter too. Yeah. Right? And then not only that, but they'll put like sometimes like makeshift uh, curtains, like oh. really have heavy curtains. That way, no one from the outside is able to see them. I think they already cleaned it out, but yeah. But yeah, one one refrigerator. So, any questions again? No. These are this is your typical like what your stash houses are gonna look like. Sometimes if they pay a little bit more, they're gonna have like the ones over there like. You said like there's some luxury like, ones, so, right? So yeah, some apartment complexes and stuff like that. But obviously those pay a little bit more money. Right. And they're the same cartels, just different organizations that are running it. Muchas gracias, oiga. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Sí. Sí, sí. Why are they still in it? So basically, are those, they were the ones who was hiding them? I don't know. <sighs> Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. Man, you're, you're welcome. Good. It was a journey. It was. it was good. So I confirmed this and it turns out that the owner who lives in the main front unit actually had no idea that she was renting her back unit to a cartel and 
being turned into a stash house. And the reason why I want to confirm this is because sometimes cartels actually pay even up to a full year in advance or above market rates as hush money so they can operate these as stash houses. Hold on. Let's go. I want to go back. Hold on. Or above market rates as hush money so they can operate. One, two. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So from right here, right here. To be honest, seventeen is a terrible number, you know. I ain't gonna lie. Next thing I have a way of trusting a human, obviously is bad. But looking at this shit, come on, that's it. Right, it. These are uh, stash houses. And as cartels have become even more involved with human smuggling, stash houses like this that serve as temporary checkpoints for migrants before payment is received or law enforcement presence decreases have started becoming more and more common in border towns like Loretto. So maybe it's no surprise why this year we've started hearing about the migrant crisis in other states from New York to Colorado. And with elections coming up, it brings up a question. Could it be that these migrants aren't just being used for cheap economic reasons, but as I've discussed in my newsletter, maybe even being used as political pawns to influence elections? Or is that all just bullshit? Because as I'll reveal by the end, the cartel actually isn't the only one that's responsible for transporting migrants. But first, oh. my plan was to meet up with the Texas Ranger to help him process a cartel member's car. EJ basically investigated uh, two cases that happened here in Laredo, and they're involving uh, former uh, U.S. Border Patrol agents. Basically, he was in a like a little, uh, he was in a big like killing spree, and he did that big investigation and. It ended up being that, uh, and this case is already closed and stuff like that, but he worked with Webb County Sheriff's Department and they were able to find out who this guy was and stuff like that. Really what broke the case was actually a DPS trooper. Um, he was actually pumping gas and a female escaped this former Border Patrol agent. The agent was trying to get her and try to assault her. She managed to escape from the vehicle, run towards the DPS trooper, and from there, the, oh, the wow. case just kind of like, it, it came to, you know, it so broke. he was like a serial killer. Yeah. He and then the, EJ was the guy who cracked yeah, the Yeah, so sometimes like, you know, we, we- I thought, hold on, hold on, whoa. I thought like he was killing people like on duty as in like, excessive force you know what i mean i saw like say for example um what's the word like say for example he would i don't know what i'm trying to say i don't know but i didn't know it was like freaking jason friday the 13th serial killer type shit we have, I have a lot of friends in Border Patrol and they're good guys, you know, hard workers and stuff like that. Uh, these bad apples that exist with, you know, within departments and stuff oh, like that. Oh, snitch. Just, like isolated, right? Like sometimes they're going through their own issues and stuff like that. And even though they're wearing a badge, doesn't necessarily mean that everybody is, is like that, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, but I guess so then, he took his that's anger how out. the reputation does get ruined for the organization. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you know, they get like that little ding, right, and stuff like that. But I think it's what they've done in, in the past, like as far as their work ethics and stuff like that, that kind of, you know, keeps that reputation in line, you know. But I guess that's what they say, right? Reputation can take years to build, but then yeah. seconds to ruin. So. Oh, yeah. 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 And being this close to the border, something interesting happened. We were heading to the car processing center and my phone actually started thinking that I was in Mexico and switched to a Mexican service provider and I got charged fat roaming fees. And just right after filming this, I flew to Japan, but this time, thanks to my sponsor, I was... Uh, okay, not your sponsor, not mine, yours. All right, there you go. By the border, I no longer have to worry about staying connected during my investigations. But now, back to the video. We're gonna go process a vehicle. It's for an aggravated assault against a federal agent. It was a, a vehicle pursuit that we had and the suspect ended up driving his vehicle and ramming a border patrol agent's vehicle. I'll, let me talk to the lady. Good morning. Uh, How are you? How's your uh, muscles? Good. Got my ass kicked and choked out this morning, so. <laughs> Yesterday, we 
We test drove it, right? Again? Test drove what? The, the, this vehicle? Oh, yeah. It, didn't, it was crazy. <laughs> didn't even feel like we were going so fast. It doesn't feel like you're going fast, but I think it's the bulletproof windows. Look at how many vehicles okay. there are. Just cool. Oh! They deal with the cartel, so it got to be bulletproof. Wow, that's okay. absolutely wrecked. Hey, 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 so it's the vehicles okay. there are just cool. absolutely Richie wrecked. Rodriguez, so this is it. Yeah. Pretty bad damage. Holy crap. Yeah, so he blew right out off. all the airbags. See where he blew all the oh, airbags. Uh, once EJ processes it, I'll show you a little bit of the, of the back. So, so what's been like the most popular type of cars? Is it like SUVs like this, any sort sorry, of brands? Of, of course, yeah, they, they want to use any kind of vehicles. And you, I don't know if you could see from here, but it, all the seats are down. And then, um, and right okay. now, once he Let's processes see. it, once, once he processes it, he starts yeah. opening the door. We'll see, but uh, you could see that uh, they're going to be all muddy. All the seats are down because they're trying to fit as many people as possible. But nonetheless, we've even found like vehicles like this one right here, right? Not this in particular, but uh, this particular model. Sometimes the car is riding real low. We'll kind of get next to it. There's nobody inside except the driver. So we know he's carrying something heavy behind. So oh. they'll usually have them in, in the trunk area. Like yeah. people? Yeah, they'll have people in the trunk oh, area. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and, and I'll share some videos with you where they, where they have people here, they have people. The more people they have, the more money they get. Right. So they're trying to get as much people as possible. So if there's 10 people, they're going to try to fit as many people as possible there. If they don't fit, then that's money that they're losing. Sure. You know what I mean? Super fascinating stuff, man. I think like the biggest thing that I'm like realizing, it's, it's obvious, but it's like a constant like game of like cat and mouse, right? It's like they're constantly innovating and the police force, they also have to con continually innovate to make sure. Hey, is the game of being a criminal to save us this game. His game uh, as a criminal, you're, you're part of the game, commit the crime. The police officer part is to catch him. And the criminal part is to not get caught. You know, so hey, for that money they're staying on top of like these trends. Do you think it's ever like possible where you guys can stay in front of these criminal networks, or are they always going to be the ones that are kind of always. quote unquote well, leading the innovation? I mean, it's it's kind of a race, right? Like sometimes yeah. we're in the front, sometimes we're in the back. You got to know that. Obviously, we spoke about this business. It's a million dollar business. Million so funds for it, right? So million. they're gonna. You know, they have access to all the technology that we do. Uh, for example, in the Valley, when I used to work over there for operations, a lot of the rafts that were being used, they're like rafts that are, that are sold like an academy and stuff. Mm. So someone must have bought it on the US side and then taken it to Mexico to give them those rafts. And they're real like nice, like little raft boats, ra raft yeah. boats and stuff like that. So yeah, so they, they have people on this side too, canoe. buying technology right. for stuff like that. And I guess they have Intels and moles, right? Yeah. Hey, you wanted gloves. Yeah, but you see mine are like... This is what this truck had. The ones I have are better. Why do you need to put gloves? Well, because you don't know what's in the car. Uh, okay, so it's not like to like mess up any sort of like it, it, right fingerprints after, or anything. Yeah, right after the fact, it's more like... For our safety. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Say you in Texas or saying you in Texas. Oh. No. Are you guys able to like block those or not show up in any of that? Sometimes they'll leave behind their cell phones. Uh, I've seen them leave behind their IDs sometimes. It's a good clue. Yeah, you see like sometimes they'll leave receipts yeah. like this. This guy paid all cash, but it still has a a date stamp, right? Like it has a, a date, it has a time, so we could literally go just go to this Jack in the Box or this establishment <laughs> and try to get footage from it. These guys are all uh, digitalized now, the the modern age, and we're kind of old school. We don't have cameras in our cars. We don't have mics in our cars and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I rely a, a bunch on Eric because because he's more up to date and all that stuff than, than we are. I see. Seems like the cartels quite digitally forward though. Yeah. Whoa, 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 what? Seems like the cartel. When did I end up on cartel TikTok? Quite digitally forward, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've been recruiting using TikTok and stuff. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. No, they have. Do you yeah. guys ever recruit using TikTok? No, we don't have our TikTok. We do have a uh, Instagram. We have uh, X. We should. We do have Facebook. Let me let me tell you how to fix this, right? Listen, recruit on TikTok. Get a bunch of scammers. Get a bunch of hackers. Think like in order to beat a criminal, you gotta join the criminal. So get them. Offer them a good paying job. Maybe like a quarter million a year, clean, low tax, and then you can stop the multi-billion dollar human, tra human trafficking trade. Thought about that? I don't know. That's my idea. If you can't beat them, join them. Obviously, get all... Uh, okay, look at it like free agency, right? Look at it like free agency. Obviously, you can't make them a better offer because it's illegal money. However... You can make incentives around it and make it bad. And when, especially when you catch the ones. When you catch them, motherfucker, don't throw them in jail. That's your problem. That's your problem. Every time you catch them, you want to throw them in a jail, you want to lock them. I know you could convert some of them motherfuckers over. Come on. I mean, Eric, do you like TikTok dances? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Or EJ, it. maybe, maybe no, you need no, to. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> He's one of the old school TikTok. I mean, shares. We don't play that. Oh. Control got yesterday. My boss is us. So you watch like the excessive clothing. Hey, so, yeah. it really does just look like but, a squatter house. But at least outside, like it looks. Yeah, nice, like you right would there. never, you would never yeah. know. You see, like inside, see like a lot of mess. See. Everybody get this stuff. That's the guys that got caught. So I think like earlier you were saying how, you know, oftentimes a lot of the drivers that they hire, they're Mexican American, you know, Loretto residents that maybe fell in with like a bad crowd. But then you just said for them, they actually also look for very clean, um, on paper, non-criminal people. Yeah, that, that, that's right. So, so they're really like looking for any sort of people. But yeah, so why would those people join that? Like, wouldn't that be very hard to like find those types of so people? Sometimes these people uh, how you said earlier, either they're hanging around with the wrong crew, they're just in need of money, maybe they're late in payments, or maybe they have a certain debt that they okay. want to take care of. So there's some sort of desperation in yeah, their situation. Yeah, for the most part there is. Um, that is one reason. The other reason being that also sometimes they see what these people have, like they have real nice houses, they, they have real nice cars, and they kind of want the same thing, right? And they're willing to risk their career or their jobs over this uh, because they think the the benefit it, it's there right so the they freedom. sometimes do these crimes and they're a perfect target for the cartels because it's like hey this guy wants to join has no criminal history has a legitimate job just needs money and it's something that law enforcement are not going to suspect he's not in our target list or right. he's not in our list so that's a perfect candidate for smuggler right but i guess that that clean slate doesn't last very long. No. I see. No. So that's why they constantly need these new recruits yeah, to exactly. have. Because it's not just nighttime where we see migrant activity in Loretto, but just like we saw on day one, it can also happen in the daytime. Right here. We had an incident here where we had a vehicle pursuit came all the way from the Mines Road area and actually made it all the way here. Actually drove the vehicle into the river and then the guy swam back. Uh, we already had identified the guy, so basically all we did is write up a warrant. So whenever the guy crosses, they usually try to cross back into the U.S. illegally, even though they're legal, uh, they'll cross through the river because they know if they go through the port of entry, we probably already have a warrant for oh, him. Oh, I yeah. see. So um, how about like this, uh, like what, whose jurisdiction is it when it hits the river? Like, can you ever go and chase them when they reach no. the river? No, so we, we uh, DPS, we never go into the river. Once a guy touches the river, we don't go in there because obviously it's, it's very dangerous mm -hmm. and they're trying to like, you know, they're starting to drown. We have certain like life-saving devices that we do have and carry around, but we never chase them into the river. Uh, Jurisdiction-wise, the DPS helicopter, he doesn't go past half of it. So oh, just so it's literally of, half yeah, of the river. Yeah, so is. he'll kind of stay in the, in the edge. On the river, on the bridge side, there'll actually be a marked line. Right, that says um, U.S. Yes, that says Mexico, U.S. and yeah. Mexico. So whether good or bad for that member, at least when you cross back, you're safe from American law. But then 
what is reality like on the other side of the border? Basically, if you guys don't know, there's Laredo, Texas, and then the border town is Nuevo Laredo. Nuevo Laredo is maybe the sketchiest border town all of Mexico. It's We always say border towns are controlled by cartel, but Nuevo Laredo is controlled at a different level. So that's Jorge Ventura, News Nation correspondent that has been covering the border crisis since 2021. And he knows firsthand how the long arm of the cartel has no limits. There's a, um, an American man who was at a party in the US side, Laredo. He was allegedly bragging about stealing $50,000 from a Mexican drug cartel. Well, two hours later, he's gone, he was kidnapped, and is still missing. F-150 truck comes, four men, they come and beat, beat the guy up, and they put him in the vehicle. So within two hours, this is on the American side, F-150 truck or like a truck, some kind comes, four men, they come and beat, beat the guy up, and they put him in the in the vehicle. Now, what always catches your attention, normally when you go back to cross into Mexico, they're supposed to stop the vehicle, but they check for papers or whatever. We were able to pull back that surveillance and notice that there was no stop at the port of entry. So Mexican officials let the F-150 go. Right before the truck goes into Mexico, back door, the left-hand side opens. The guy's name is Jonathan. He tries to get out of the car and they, they pull him right right back in and then they go right into Mexico. That, that guy's dead now. I mean, that's, that's for sure. He hasn't been found since. And so at least I'm smart enough in that I wasn't planning on disrespecting nor glorifying the cartel, but it's undeniable that they're clearly organized innovative and have the resources to execute their plans. And so it got me thinking because if cartels can cross borders, not only physically or by influence, does this mean that no matter how secure the border gets, the cartel will always find a way to smuggle a migrant, especially if the money is there. To find out, I wanted to go to the border wall to find out if this really can be a solution. So right now we're actually headed towards the border wall. Um, just to see what it is, right? Because oftentimes what we've seen throughout this investigation is the border is made up from the Rio Grande River. But in those instances where there isn't a river, the border wall is placed. Or as we're about to go see, there are some gaps in the border wall in which it makes it easier for these migrants to enter into. Okay, we're nearing the uh, border location. It's kind of like an off-road right here. You kind of see the wall there? You see it? Oh, I see it. I don't know if you guys can see it from the distance, but... We'll, we'll get closer. Yeah. Do you have tires? <laughs> yeah. So what they'll do is essentially they'll... They'll, um... They'll freaking... Sorry. Do you have it locked? They'll cover the tracks, right? Yeah. So what they'll do is, like, they'll... They'll put those on the hitch, and then they'll drag it, and essentially what they're doing is they're clearing out the path. That way they could, in case there was any kind of footprints and stuff like that, um, they clear them out and that's how they know. So sometimes you'll see the Border Patrol agent, they'll roll down their window and you'll see them sometimes they're just looking down like that. Oh, to and see what if they're, they're doing is they're, tracks. yeah, foot tracks. And then once he clears it out, since he did uh, new tire marks, then he'll drag the tire to erase his tire marks. Oh, okay. Cause I was about to ask like, why don't you guys just confiscate those tires? But. You're yeah. doing the same thing as well. Yeah, no, yeah. Right. So both both parties are using it. Yeah. <laughs> Smart. Yeah, I think this is the first time I've actually seen like a border wall versus like a port of entry or the, yeah. or the river. Yeah, that thing's probably steaming hot too. <laughs> Just imagine like this, how hot this is, imagine that. Maybe. Wow. How, do you know how tall it is? No, to be honest, I don't. Yeah, it's wow. kind of hard to put on right here. 50 feet? Oh, no, yeah, 50. No. Before we went to another view of the border, it did make me think. Because even when we ignore the politics and the cost behind it, how effective is this wall? And a better question is, are there better alternatives? In 1993, Operation Hold the Line was used in another border town by the name of El Paso, Texas, where they that. physically stationed border patrol agents at regular intervals along a 20 mile stretch. And it was actually effective. The operation significantly reduced border crossings, but-, but cons Come on, man, that's Texas. You want to have man I'm staying out there for all that time? Concerns about migrant injuries and deaths from being forced into dangerous areas led to it being replaced by technologies from the cameras we saw previously to barriers like this border wall instead of relying purely on manpower. Which in my mind, it totally makes sense because it's not sustainable or optimal to only rely on manpower, but at the same time, how realistic then is it to only rely on technology or to bank on building a wall? To answer this question, EJ wanted to show me this border wall 
from another perspective. Uh, years ago, they called us that there was a gun battle close to the rest area here. So when we arrived, we could see like tanks and like heavy artillery uh, vehicles. And they had a gun battle right, right there where those houses are at. Uh huh. And after a while, you can see the house started burning and you can see them coming from all over the place and then they took off that way. Jeez. I guess they were- Like you can't really even do anything, right? No, like, well, I, I guess our deal was more like be here just in case- Oh, some like something spills coming. over? Yeah. yeah. Jeez, tanks? Yeah. yeah. Well, like armored, armored vehicles, I guess. Right. You haven't seen the cross on the highway? Oh yeah, but is that even a Texas thing? I thought it was like just everywhere. Well, I don't know. Well, and Texas is real big. So remember I told you about that girl that shot herself? Uh, Can you explain it? Uh, years ago, this, this girl went missing uh, in Laredo. They thought she was going to college, but it turns out she, was, she had already left. But I guess the parents started calling her phone. They couldn't get a hold of her. And, and somebody or some or other through Facebook or Twitter was able to narrow the, the search right here. At the time, some of the troopers were working OLS and they started searching the area because they found her car. So they started searching the area and one of the troopers found her a little bit further down. Uh, and the father, I guess about a year later, he came and erected that little monument there. Mm. Uh, that's not mm. where she was found. She was found a little bit further down. I see. But I guess she used to come here and, and take pictures and that, that, that's what we found on her computer and on her cell phone. So she was, was familiar just, with the area. Why, why did she do it? Just depression or? Man, nobody ever knows why somebody wants to take their own life. I guess they take it with them unless they leave a note or something like that. Hmm. That's some real okay, shit. We found a, like yeah, a we found an yeah, opening like, probably like a down there. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this. I just asked if we can get down there. If you fall. <laughs> you know, yeah. ain't no 911 is going to get you right away. <laughs> You guys are just gonna look the other way? Yeah, you signed a waiver. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to imagine like barbed wire like that is a lot easier to cross, right? It seems shorter. No, you don't have to mess with a barbed wire. I just cut, just cut, cut through the, the middle, right? Mm -hmm. So essentially what, what the fence is, it's just more of a deterrent, deterrent for them to like think about crossing through here. They're, they might try crossing through other sides, but what happens is that uh, like some of the fencing, um, in some of the ranches, it's it's optional, right? If they want it or they don't want mm -hmm. it. But what happens then is that you have several ranches next to each other. Some have it, some don't have it. So they're gonna go through where they don't have it and then they they start having issues. You know what I mean? So they might've never had issues, but then they realize like, hey, my neighbors have fences and now all the issues are co coming towards oh, me. So now they decide to put up fencing themselves. You know? So there's a lot of game theory and, and kind of just like you do it yeah. versus if I don't do it, then, then it'll come to me. So I guess like what I'm getting at is that one, there's geographical challenges where you can't put those big ass walls that we just saw previously in certain locations, but then also kind of budget and also private property concerns when it comes to being able to build those sort of yeah, walls. A lot of these lands, they're owned, right? They're, they're very old lands. So sometimes, you know, some of the owners are not even like mm. from here. Some of the right. owners are from yeah. out of state and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Some of them might not even be here anymore and sure. they belong to someone else. And, so. and also, also keep in mind, you know, a bunch of these guys that have property on the river, they might get threatened by the cartels from Mexico. Oh. So, hey, you know what? I better not see the fence on your side. So that's another thing that a bunch of people don't think about. Cartel pressure, private property, location, geography. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of it. I like the dude in the car. So a lot of this is I private have, land? A lot of it is, but we're able to access. Like, these these are not gated, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. this ones are open. Uh, but there are some lands, like, for example, like, if you see from far away, you kind of see those sticks mm -hmm. with, with some of the wiring and mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, so some of those are private. That's how you would know they're, they're private, the, the fences and stuff like that. Now, there is a section of river that the government owns, and it's a big issue in Zapata County right now because the landowners thought they owned it. And now the government saying, no, we own it. So it really is not as simple as just saying build a wall. Right. Oh, no. Mm. no there's, there's a lot of things yeah. behind it. I mean, private branches, some of them are city properties, some of them are government uh, properties. So it all. But, correct. If you pay, ta if you pay state taxes, my opinion, it's not that difficult to get it. You can get it. Bro. You can buy. You can purchase whatever little piece you need to do to purchase. The government can make an offer, and the government can force you to sell. Or the government can. Have, they can easily say, "Oh, it's for development." Just saying that, because they do it all the time. Every country do it. Like, God damn it, we about to do it here in Turks and Caicos as well. Sooner or later, we'll have to do it for the airport here.
They can do it. All comes boils down to the landscape, who owns the property, and the budget, right? Thank you, man. It's just gonna really, be a big really ass budget. It. I'm not saying yeah, everything. Yeah, anytime you want to come train jujitsu, let me know. Train, <laughs> get um, choked out again? Yeah, no. If you want to come ride with the hot control, let, let us know. And uh, man, we're always open arms here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, man. Good. Past year, this whole issue about the migrant border crisis has been, I have talked about a lot. Right, and, and obviously for good reason. So you don't need me to say that it's clearly complex and especially with elections coming up. But as mentioned earlier, is the future of our nation in the future of the border being manipulated by migrants to swing the election? While stash houses like you and I both saw are one method in which cartels use to transport migrants, there's an even bigger player moving these migrants, and it's the government. Republican ah. governors from Texas, Florida to Arizona have bused migrants to other states as a political statement and to also shift the burden of dealing with migrants caused by federal immigration policies. And so if that's the case, can Republicans still claim that the surge of migrants in swing states is meant to influence elections? Because yes, migrants do tend to blue Democrat, but even if Congress today is trying to push bills to ban non-citizens from voting, the fact is it's already been illegal. Wait a minute. To push bills. Yes, migrants do tend to blue Democrat, but even if Congress today is trying to push bills to ban non-citizens from voting, The fact is, it's already been a as of 94. Also, have banned non-citizens from voting for Congress at a criminal penalty. Okay, 19 as of 1924. It is illegal for non-citizens to vote in federal or state elections in the United States. There is no con. But I like I can't fucking read. Green <laughs> card. Okay. Unauthorized immigrants and these are voting in significant numbers despite some claims that quote unquote millions of non citizens are voting in an in US election. In fact, honest by elections officials and numerous study studies reflect that voters fraud by non citizens is extremely rare so that's not true illegal since 1924 and punishable by law since 1996 but at the same time while some democrats are dismissing it i have no doubt that election fraud does happen to some degree in every election and if we're gonna require id on everything from going to the bar from opening up a bank account why do we not mandate photo ids for voting and if the best argument is why oh, do we not photo sorry no photo is required no id required california god damn the whole west coast non photo id required so they just require an id um yeah not man i want to move texas and they photo ids for voting and if the best argument is that certain groups can't and won't be able to get IDs, not only is that racist, but also deeply patronizing. So with that said, there's clear hypocrisies. And whether it be the left or the right, the migrant issue won't be solved anytime soon. Because if there's one thing- Yeah, question. I've been hearing that left and right shit for a minute. Is, what is right and what is left? Is PD- Lord, this is me talking about PDM. That's a political party. Is Democrat left or Republican right? Who is right and who's left? That's basically what I try to figure out. The thing that both are united in is money. Because if it was truly in the best interest for the US to solve it or fix it, they God would have. Damn. History shows that they would have done whatever it takes to solve the issue. But again, it's just a theory. But with my other home country of Japan hitting the highest number of immigrants amidst the labor shortage, hey, maybe it might be true around the world. So subscribe and follow me on X and IG so you can tell me your thoughts just like this nice guy here. Because look, I'm also always willing to change my mind. <laughs> just like I'm sorry. The first thing I saw was you're an African Asian. That part got my attention. Bro, you're not an African American. You're African Asian. You what the F are you changing? Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. You're an uh, African Asian. Asian. You what the F are you? What? Are you, are you change your, that's crazy. 
I'm, I'm reading as I see it. Just tell me if I'm wrong. You what the f? You are you change your YouTube country to f Asian? If you're not changing my name, I will kill you, mother. Oh. I don't think he's saying fuck <laughs> when he said F word. Because he said motherfucking. <laughs> he's, I'm assuming you're not a, okay, you're not an, you're not an effing American. You're a effing, I think he's trying to say F there. Asian, you what the fuck are wrong? Chain? I don't know if somebody's trying to say that. Basically, he started to kill him. You're an effing Asian, and I know you're effing and oh, and I know you're effing address. Get the f out in my get the f out in my effing country. You're Asian. Get out in America if you don't know. If you don't, you will be killed, my boy. <sighs> this nice guy here. Because, look, I'm also always willing to change my mind. But don't click off yet, because if you like our mission, you can click the link in bio to learn about how we can start taking the next step of leading the future of journalism together. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but if you guys enjoyed the video, smash that like button. Um, my theory, my opinion from a non-American minding my own non-american business <sighs> the border is an issue like i don't know how they're gonna fix it but i wish them the best i wish them the best really and truly i, I really don't know can't tell you can't even give an idea can't give you my opinion i'm just watching videos to be educated honestly but until we meet again in the next one i'm out peace